Hi, I'm Lou from Dividends Dog. Here we talk about stocks with an emphasis on dividends paying stocks. So if that's your kind of thing, consider subscribing. So today we're going to talk about a company called SL Green Realty. And SL Green Realty is a REIT called the Real Estate Investment Trust. It owns a portfolio, uh, almost a hundred percent percent of the which owns almost a hundred percent of their portfolio is based in New York City. With almost all of that in the area of Manhattan. Um, some of some of their real estate they own a hundred percent, others they just own a portion of. Uh, some they own the land, some uh, they rent the lands. We'll go over some of that. Um, so REITs are companies that invest in real estate. Uh, they do not pay tax at the corporate level, uh, but rather they distribute at least 90% of taxable income to shareholders as dividends. And these dividends are usually taxed at a higher rate if held in a non-retirement account. Uh, so they're taxed more like ordinary or earned income tax rate versus qualified dividends. So I'm not a tax expert, uh, so you can consult your your tax professional if you need to, uh, but that's the gist of it. So we'll go over the history. It was started this company by Stephen L. Green back in 1980. Uh, the current format of the company was formed in 1997 to combine these entities to create this company that we see today. Uh, today, they say they are Manhattan's largest office landlord. As of June 30th, 2022, SL Green held interest in 64 buildings, totaling 34.4 million square feet. This includes ownership interest in 26.3 million square feet of Manhattan buildings and 7.2 million square feet securing debt and preferred equity investments. So that's the history of it. Uh, financially, uh, with, with REITs, uh, FFO or funds from operations are more practical to use as a metric than earnings per share. Uh, it's a better metric because to use the funds from operations, uh, it makes adjustments for depreciation, which is significant with real estate companies. So over the past six years or so, the rental income has decreased as what they've been doing is they've sold properties they think have lower prospects while buying some that they believe offer better prospects. Uh, note that the FFO per share have actually increased as they sell these buildings off. They've been doing two things with the money. Uh, one, they've been buying back stock with the money so that the common shares outstanding is significantly less than it was before. Uh, and the second use of the cash has been paying down debt. So the dividends per share are slowly rising over the past years. Although the dividends as a percentage of the FFO has been rising as well. So how strong looking at the company how strong is the company so we look at this here look at value line value line rates it as b plus plus um morning let's see morning star they lower their fair value to 64 dollars a share uh, they note that there's no moat uh, it has kind of lackluster earnings a uh, work from home trend uh, i couldn't find anything from s and p but Moody's uh, downgraded the debt to BA1 uh, as an outlook stable, and Fitch downgraded their debt to triple uh, B minus with a, with a negative outlook. As far as insider, we should look at insider. There's quite a bit of insider uh, things to go over here. Uh, so this insider trading, which we can take a look at, so a few of the directors sold some stock in 2022, 2021. Um, they were priced in the prices of $63 to $81 a share. Uh, 
notable was back in February 2021. Andrew Mateus, who's president, he sold $7 million worth at $65 and change each. Uh, in February 2021, the CEO purchased almost $500,000 worth at a price of $25.33. Uh, it's interesting to know that that's way below where it traded. So there must have been some sort of stock options or, or something to get it so cheap. Uh, as far as the insider ownership, uh, Stephen L. Green, the founder, he owns about 1.22% of the company through units. Uh, Mark Holliday, the chairman and CEO, he owns 1.69% of the company. Andrew Mateus, the president, owns 1.56% of the company. Uh, there's, a cut, there's a couple of things here when I look at the insider ownership, insider trading couple of things that I found to be pretty unusual. So I'll go over them here. The first one here is on the 2021 annual report, page 20 to 21. It was under related party transactions. It says there's this company called Alliance Building Services or Alliance and Affiliates. And they provide services to properties that they own, at least some of the properties that they own, and this, this company, it's partially owned by a man named Gary, Gary Green. You know, that's the son of Stephen L. Green, who serves as the member uh, and chairman emeritus of the board of directors. So they go on to talk about income earned from the profit participation, uh, which includes other income on consolidated statements. And they say how it was uh, it was 1.7 million, 1.4 million, 3.9 million. Those are for the years 2021, 2020, 2019, respectively. And then they talk uh, expenses. They talk about recorded expenses: uh, 14 million, 13.3 million, 18.8 million for the years 2021, 2020, 2019 for these services. So, okay, so basically they pay some money into this thing. Uh, they earn some money on this arrangement, uh, which is cleaning, extermination, security, messenger, restoration services. So there's this company owned by the son of the founder who's on the board. He has this company, but there's this profit participation. So, okay, that's one thing, fine. So number two, the second part, which I find more problematic is on their building one it's one Vanderbilt Avenue uh, so they state here that in December of 2016 we entered into agreements with entities owned and controlled by our chairman and CEO Mark Holiday and our president Andrew Mateus pursuant to which they agreed to make an investment in our one Vanderbilt project at the appraised fair market value for the interests acquired. This investment entitles these entities to receive approximately 1.5% to 1.8% and 1% to 1.2% respectively of any profits realized by the company from its one Vanderbilt's project in excess of the company's capital contribution. So, one Vanderbilt is big on S.L. Green's uh, list of new things. And here we have our CEO and we have Chairman Mark Holliday. He's taking a 1.5 to 1.8 interest. And the president, Andrew Mateus, is taking a 1% to 1.2% interest in it. So I don't know about all of you. This, this seems very weird to me. Um, both our, our CEO and our president in this case are effectively, they're investing alongside the company that they are running. So on the one hand, they have skin in the game with this one particular building, but th this makes me wonder, I mean, doesn't this create a conflict of interest? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I... I, I would think it, it would. I mean, it seems like if there's, let's say there's a great tenant that comes along and, you know, now they're looking at their big portfolio 
of, of buildings here that they own with in the company the company owns and now if there's this really outstanding tenants won't they have a won't they want to push that tenant towards one Vanderbilt's because that's quote unquote their building that they personally own an interest in you know as opposed to just being you know looking at the company's ownership of all the buildings and you know the other buildings that us public shareholders all own so it's it's not you know it's it seems the, it's not the end of the world i just find it it's it's almost very awful chummy to me to say well you know the company that you're running owns these buildings but you personally own a share of this particular building and that's the ceo and the president i, I don't know to me that seems that seems weird it seems like it just leads to a potential conflict if there's a great potential tenant and then they'll want them to go into that building and not the ones that just the company owns but speaking speaking of the all these buildings because we're looking at you know they have this whole map that they show of all these buildings that they have an interest in and you know it it, it one it makes me wonder out of all these buildings here uh which buildings produce the most money for the company so on page 55 of the 2021 annual report on both 2021 and 2022 uh, number one is 11 Madison Avenue was number one. So in 2021, it brought in 10.8% of cash rent. Uh, and in some interesting facts here, SL Green, they only own 60% of this top performer. Uh, and this building was originally conceived as a 100-story spire that would have been the tallest in the world. So the Great Depression put a stop in the original plan, and the building was completed with 30 floors, although the base was designed to support an additional 70 stories. So I guess that's good. I mean, the base must be uh, stronger than needed, so that's, that's good. Uh, the property serves as the North American headquarters of Credit Suisse and the U.S. headquarters of Sony, it's home to the world-renowned three Michelin-star restaurants, 11 Madison Park. So 11 Madison Ave is like the number one performer the last two years, uh, 2021 and 2020, which is kind of interesting. I mean, it looks like this big blocky building, and I guess that's why, because it was originally going to be this 100-story tower. So it's only a 30-story tower, but, you know, hopefully you know, built really good, but it's definitely a good performer. Uh, number two, the second highest performer is 420 Lexington Ave, which is the second highest producer of 8.3% of 2021 revenue, also known as the Gray Bar Building. So SL Green owns 100% of this building, but interesting, it does not own the land. It's a leasehold interest. So when will the lease terminate? terminates in 2050 but the final extensions bring it up to year 2080 so okay so we've got we've got decades and decades to go before we have any problems so number three is 1515 broadway contributes 8.1 percent of 2021 revenue uh, it's a 54 story building sl green owns 56.9 percent of the building uh, serves as the international headquarters of media giant Viacom in the home of the Minskoff Theater. That's the home to Disney's musical The Lion King. Okay, so number four, as far as bringing in the money, it's 1185 Avenue of the Americas that contributed 8% of 2021's rents. So this is an interesting one here, which seems pretty dangerous to me. SL Green owns 100% of the building, but not the land. It's another leasehold interest. So here the lease expires in 2043. And it goes on to talk about how that's final. And there's no extensions beyond that. So I think the way I read this is in the year 2043, 
S.L. Green they simply loses the building to the landowner, whoever that happens to be. So they're going to invent 2043 rolls around, so they effectively lose a top performer. If we look back in 2019, it was the number one performer. Um, in 2020, it was number three. In 2021, it was the number four. So over the last few years, it's been a top performer. Um, you know, I know it sounds 2043 like, oh, you know, that's a while away, but uh, not really. We're talking 20, 21 years. They, they lose one of their top uh, money makers. So that's, that's not good. So number five is 280 Park Avenue. Uh, that contributes 6.7% of 2021 rents. SL Green, they own 50% of this. Uh, number six is 919 Third Avenue, contributes 5.5% of rent in 2021. SL Green owns 51%. Is a famous saloon and restaurant, PJ Clark's. Talks about how it's a New York legend going back to 1884. The restaurant is home to what singer Nat King Cole once described as the Cadillac of Burgers. Okay, maybe I'll have to try that. <laughs> have a burger next time I'm in New York City. Uh, number seven is 485 Lexington Ave. That contributes 5.3% of the 2021 rents. SL Green owns 100% of that. And number eight is 555 West 57th Street, contributing 5.2% of 2021 rents. SL Green owns 100%. Uh, the building was known as the Ford Motors Building because the car manufacturer occupied a spacious showroom on the ground floor. It's now occupied by BMW. So, when we look at the pros of a company like this, I would say the biggest pro is just the location, location, location. Uh, you know, you think of real estate and here you have Manhattan. So yeah, I'm interested, you know, in my, my view of things, you know, Manhattan real estate. I mean, unless you're like Donald Trump or one of these type tycoons, you know, it's out of reach for most of us. And here we have a company that basically you know, all of their portfolio and near all of it is, is located there. So it's a way for us public shareholders to buy into this trust and participate in that. It's very exciting. Uh, so I would say that's the biggest pro. Uh, the cons, uh, there are a few cons. I, I guess the first thing we think about is kind of like what Morningstar's report talks about, that if the whole work from home thing becomes... Uh, you know, an ingrained cultural aspect of America. Um, I guess, do we need all these office buildings everywhere? So I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's going to be, you know, the end all be all forever, but I guess you never know. It's a risk. Uh, there's interest rate risks. Some of their debt is fixed. Uh, some of, some of the debt is variable. Um, they go into great detail talking about swaps and everything so I, I don't really know i mean i went into this i started reading it and rereading it and it's pages of talking about their debts and the swaps I, I don't particularly understand all of this i think this is way beyond my my understanding of it maybe maybe some of you understand more than i do but i think we all know that you know right now we're in a period of interest rates are rising so any variable rate debt that a company has is going to be subject to going up in the future. I think that will hold as long as um, as the rates are climbing, and they're going to probably keep climbing while you know we have inflation going up here eight percent or more. So another risk is the strategy that they have of buying back shares. It sounds good on the surface. I like selling off less productive buildings. Uh, decreasing the share counts. The risk here is the shares they bought back were at much higher prices than where the stock is now in the $40 range. I mean, look at the chart of the stock price over five years. I mean, investors in this have experienced pain, a lot of pain. But this is, it's been like this for many other 
office real estate trust. So it's it's more the industry and the stock market than this particular company. I think this is going on a lot with office building owners. So, and the, and the fourth risk I would say is a risk is the having to trust the management that they have our best interests in mind when doing these deals with relatives. Uh, they're taking pieces of ownership here in one Vanderbilt. Uh, you know, you can, I guess, come to your own conclusions about this. So in summary, uh, just to try to bring this all together, I, I like the value proposition here. You know, the idea, at least in my mind, Manhattan real estate, you know, I think of every, every square foot in Manhattan is just like invaluable. You know, it's just like it's beyond the means of we can't just go out and buy it. I mean, unless, again, you're like a billionaire tycoon. But if you're of modest means, you know, you're not going to be able to buy into a market like this unless you go along with a company like this that does this and you can buy buy shares in it. Um, I mean, these shares were in the $100 uh, price point per share a few years ago. Um, I, me, myself, I've owned some stock and I've sold some and then I've made a few dollars. I recently got back into it, uh, but my basis right now is $46.19. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this like, well, yeah, because of the economy as a whole, um, you know, these, these shares might be worth significantly more than the going price right now. And this is not financial advice. Uh, this is just my honest opinion. And I think that's really the truth of SL Green Realty Trust stock. So leave your comments, your thoughts, your opinions, and thank you for watching.